What's up, Twitter heads? Welcome back to another video here today with Phil. And if you are new to the channel, hey, how's it going? My name's Phil, and this is where we talk about tennis in a more casual way for you guys to understand what is going on on and off the court, and just to have some fun with the sport. But before we start this video, I need you guys to make sure you hit that subscribe button. We are almost at 700 subscribers. If we can hit that by the end of the year, that would be amazing from you guys. And if you are currently a subscriber, make sure to turn on those notifications so that way you don't miss any new videos that we're posting. So let's just get started into the video it is the off season i hope everyone had a great thanksgiving if you do celebrate thanksgiving happy thanksgiving to you and if you don't hope you had a great thursday today it is the off season it's been the off season for some time now and so far the end of the season awards from the atp and wta have come out for the nominees for each of their categories so we are going to dive in and going to take a look at who's nominated and kind of predict the winners to see who is our pick for those awards now i'm not necessarily sure if we they've missed anyone so make sure as we're going along in this video make sure to comment down below who you guys think are the winners as well as who you guys think we missed or the atp or wta missed for these nominees let's get straight into it dave i've already gone off and downloaded the website page and see who's kind of just to get a glance of it and highlight for you guys just to point out who was nominated for each award because there's not really an organized kind of category but no criticism for the wta player of the year awards we have bianca andrescu ash barty simona halep osaka pliskova for player of the year if i was to pick it god that's so tough I would, who won a Grand Slam this year out of all of them? Barty won a slam, Halep won a slam, Osaka won it, and Andrescu. I don't, Pliskova is good, don't get me wrong. Karolina Pliskova is a great player, but she has yet to win a Grand Slam. She's won a lot of premier mandatories, but this year, you have to win a slam if you're going to be player of the year. So if I was to pick them, and the most consistent out of all of them, has to be Andrescu, right? Like coming back, winning Indian Wells, winning the Challenger at Indian Wells, winning the US Open. I mean, is there really anyone else that had a better year than her? I would pick Bianca Andreescu for player of the year. Doubles team of the year. Landanovich and Babos, they won the WTA finals and they won a Grand Slam this year, I would say them. Most improved player of the year. Now this is very important because throughout the year there's not, the WTA compared to the ATP is very spontaneous for some people. And I think when it comes to improvement, we've definitely seen a lot of players do well once the year's progressed. And the nominees for this category are, let's see, we have three nominees, only three. And no, there's five, six. Can I do math? Okay, so it's three Americans and then Benchich, Zhang, and then Bechich. Out of the three Americans, I would say Ansimova or Benchich because Benchich somehow won Dubai and no one saw that coming. And then I would say Anasimova because, or Anasimova because of her run at the French Open. She had a very tough year with her father passing away, so thoughts and prayers to her. And she, I think as a teenager, she's 17 years old and she's done so well. Benchich is also a runner up for the WTA Comeback Player of the Year, and I think that's a very important category. Definitely, I would say Benchich player because Benchich has been on tour for so long and she did so well this year, I would definitely put her down as comeback player of the year as well. Now, and the last one for newcomer of the year, Andrescu, Coco Gauff, Muhova, Rybikina, Switek, and Yastremska. If it was a popularity contest, Coco Gauff, just from the amount of press she's gotten over the past year, and she won her made in WTA title in Linz, I would say Coco Golf. But Muhova won a title this year, Swiatek did really well this year, so Yastrzemska did really well this year. 
Andrescu. If Andrescu wins player of the year this year, I would say it's definitely going to Coco Golf. If Andrescu doesn't win player of the year on the WTA Tour, I would definitely think it has to be Andrescu if it's not Coco Golf. period. Just because I also have to take into account the amount of attention and media that they've developed throughout the year because especially when it comes to these end of the year awards it's def it's voted on by the media so whoever got the most attention whoever made the biggest splash for them it's definitely going to that player so it's definitely between Andrescu and Coco Golf. so those are my picks for the WTA awards for the end of the year now let's look at the ATP side all right so on the men's side we're starting with comeback player of the year and now this is a very interesting category because we have Murray, Rublev, Sanga, and Wadranka now Sanga won a challenger he's come back he's already back in the top 50. Wadranka came back this year off an injury as well and was in the top 20 and Rublev I believe finished around 20 maybe around those 20 areas but I think he was 20 and then we have Murray. If we go based off ranking Wadranka would definitely win this but just purely off kind of the popularity contest that some of these awards are based off of and the documentary that Andy Murray just came out with and the fact that he basically retired and I made a video on him retiring thanking him for his unbelievable career this has to go to Andy Murray right this has to go to Andy Murray I mean his singles ranking as of right now is 222 his doubles ranking is in the top 100 because he won Queens Club with Feliciano Lopez it has to go to Andy Murray just just because no one thought he was gonna play tennis again just just based off that storyline it has to go to Sir Andy Murray. Most improved player. Now this is now this is very tough, especially on the ATP because you have Oje Aliassim did very well this year. Berrettini made splash at a Grand Slam. Medvedev and Sissipas. Now I think it's between these two. Medvedev purely based off the amount of titles he won this year and finishing within the top five. Sissipas winning the ATP Finals. It, it's tough. If I was to pick between those two, most improved player, I would say Medvedev, just purely based on the amount of titles he won in finishing his ranking. I know Sissipas won a bigger title than Medvedev did, but Medvedev had one of the best summer circuits, I think, in ATP history. Just based off those results, I have to give it to Danny Medvedev. Just based on that summer circuit, he was literally unstoppable and took no time off. Back to back to back to back, every tournament, winning something, runner up, winning something, runner up. Unbelievable. So that's definitely going in Medvedev. Newcomer of the year. This is also tough because this is a lot of young talent. Felix has been, last year and this year have been some of his best years. And he's been doing very well as Canada's top young gun. 100%. Alejandro, a young Spaniard, was in the next gen finals. Kesmanovic had a pretty good year as his breakout year. And he, we did an interview with him in Atlanta, and he might be the next Novak Djokovic. That would be a really interesting thing for you guys to talk about. Check it out on our channel. Mutet had a really good Leon tournament. Popperin, always a great young Aussie. Rude finalist at the men's clay court in Houston this year. Yannick Sinner won the next gen finals in Milan, his hometown. And Michael Ymir. Sorry if I pronounced that wrong to my Swedish tennis fans. But I would definitely say Yannick Sinner just because he hasn't had enough media attention that people are giving him and now people are starting to pick up on it. And I definitely think for newcomer of the year, as an 18 year old, Yannick Sinner has had some huge wins this year. And I, after winning the next gen finals, I definitely think he could be a top talent in the ATP. So definitely watch out for him. That's my vote. Sportsmanship award, Roger, Rafa, Schwartzman and team. Rafa said maybe he could win it this year. Sispas clapped back basically on Twitter and said, yeah, I don't think so. It's going to be Roger again, just because Roger does a lot of, he definitely does a little, just because Roger is the guy that everyone loves on tour. The Schwartzman and team too, I definitely think, and Schwartzman and team have kind of that friendship that people talk about as well online, but Roger definitely has to have the sportsmanship award just because and then term of the year, Masters 1000, definitely I would say Indian Wells. 500 events, hmm, that's a good one. 
Um, I definitely, I am definitely a fan of the City Open for the 500 event and 250. Surprisingly enough, I do really like the Stockholm Open and the one in Denis Shapovalov won, the, won it this year. And I definitely think that's a tournament that everyone needs to go to. Great location, great facilities, and just an overall great environment. So I definitely recommend that for tournament of the year for 250. Hall might be a good nomination for 500 as well. I believe it's a 500. Yeah. So I would, that's a tough one, but Masters 1000s, I would definitely say Indian Wells is tennis paradise. So I would definitely recommend that. So if I missed anything, guys, let me know in the comments down below. If you guys have a nomination, let me know. I would love to find out more of who the ATP or WTA is missing from these lists. And I hope you guys did enjoy this video. Make sure if you do like this video, make sure you leave a big like on it. And if you didn't like a video, like it anyways. And make sure you are subscribed to Tweenerhead Tennis. Let's hit that 700 mark by the end of the year. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. If you want to check us out on more of our behind the scenes adventures, check us out on all our social medias. All the links are down in the description below for Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and our website at tweenerheadtennis.com for more tennis photos throughout the year, as well as articles on our website. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope to see you guys next time. Thanks guys.